Welcome, everyone, to the next episode of the Spin Life Well Show. I'm Certified Kingdom Advisor Mark Trice. Here along in the studio is my fellow financial professional, Jesse Hamilton. Jesse. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the show. So we've been kind of traveling the last week, doing a lot of different things, yes. uh, seeing the seeing the sights of the Western United States. But one of the topics that came up quite a bit in our conversation with other financial advisors was the whole... ESG investing movement. Yes, that stands for environmental, social, and governance. And it is a polarizing topic in the world of finance these you, days. You either love it or you hate it. Yeah, and, and it and doesn't have to be that way, but that's the way it is right now. Uh, because even though a lot, of, and, and environmental cl cleaner, socially fair, and govern better. Now, these are all vague words. That, that are positive things, right? These mean oh, good yes. things. They're all positive things. You I mean it. Who wouldn't want a cleaner environment? Yeah. Who would not want to be socially more fair? Uh huh. And who would not want their public companies that they invest in to be governed better? Right. All very, very good concepts. Mm -hmm. So, it, Jesse, it, don't we have a verse today? Uh, let's let's throw in, throw in our verse today because I want to make sure people contemplate on that a little bit. It's in, from Matthew ten, I believe. Yes. Um. It is Matthew ten fourteen. It says, "If anyone will not receive you or listen to your words." Shake off the dust from your feet when you leave that house or town. And of course, this is Jesus sending out his disciples to go um, spread the word and uh, perform on his behalf and all that. So there's a lot of disciples of ESG out there going around. <laughs> there are. And, and what they're doing is, is they're just shrugging off anyone else that might disagree with this approach. And the concept of ESG investing has been really rising rapidly within the industry such that a number of big players in the mutual fund space mm -hmm. have been slapping labels on all sorts of different funds, labeling them as ESG. Right. And you've definitely heard of the one that we're talking about. We're not going to name it, but it's managing about $10 trillion in the United States. So what do you, what do you really need to look for here? And we're going to talk today a little bit about kind of the pros and cons of mm -hmm. these. Now, from, from a biblical standpoint, um, the biblically responsible investing community, the fund families that offer biblically responsible investments, have tried to distance themselves from the ESG label. Right. Several companies put that label on their fund initially, and after some pretty serious pushback from the actual ESG companies, they decided to pull them back. Some still use it. But, you know, they would like to collaborate, but it's not worked so far. No, because um, a, a lot of the, ESG, uh, the ESG crowd wants to alienate um, believers and biblically responsible investments. You know, they claim to be socially fair and, and, inclusive. and inclusive and tolerant, but they're actually very intolerant uh -huh. when it comes to this. So there was a, a, Jesse, there was a big study that came out just recently and uh, you want to talk about that a little bit? Um, yeah, sure. I believe it came from uh, Harvard Research, but it, it, it's an article that we're reading here, and it, it talks about how ESG funds actually might cost three times as much as they should, and how you we all know that you're going to pay extra fees for this privilege of investing in ESG funds, but the cost can be significantly higher than you realize. Well, from this Starver, uh, study from Harvard University, this is the, um, and some also people that are affiliated with Harvard and the National Bureau of Economic Research mm -hmm. and others, uh, they basically found that about 68% of, of funds that are in an ESG-labeled mutual fund are also found in funds that are not labeled as ESG. Okay, so... 68% of the investments are the exact same, but you pay the high fees on the whole portfolio. Typically, ESG mutual funds have higher operating expenses and fees. Right. Okay. And, but instead of, even though it's only a third of the portfolio that are truly environmentally cleaner, mm -hmm. socially fair, and govern better companies. Yeah the label gets applied to the entire portfolio in that mutual fund. And a mutual fund, for those that are, are not aware, a mutual fund is, is basically a basket of stocks or bonds or yes. a combination of those things. And so rather than a typical investor having to go out and buy 200 different individual stocks or bond funds, the, the fund manager will do that for you. But what we're saying here is that only about a third of the companies that are within that portfolio are actually passing the bar right. 
when it comes to ESG labels. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, for some people, those high fees might be worth it to have those small amount of companies in your portfolio. I can accept that. Yeah. I mean, if someone is, is, is socially conscious and wants to make sure that their investments cover this, mm -hmm. maybe they're willing to pay 60% more on fees to have that feeling, mm -hmm. if you will. Yeah. Well, we think that, you know, funds are, their performance is going to be dragged down by high fees. Mm -hmm. And yet ESG is the rage. And and so we've seen a lot of this. Even, even the White House has proposals out there to make retirement plans um, out there sub subject to ESG scoring. Right. Now, this received a lot of pushback uh, from a number of different professionals out there. And, and also to the, the folks that are aligned with biblically responsible investments. Yeah. And unfortunately, I think that's why this becomes so polarizing for a lot of people. Those standards of what is ESG are very vague. And unfortunately, that leads to a lot of manipulation that we've seen so far. And, and anytime you're going to cross over the financial world and the politics, it can get messy. Yeah. And so uh, what we're seeing is, is higher fees for these labels when in fact they may not be any more socially or governing or environmentally mm -hmm. responsible than the next guy who doesn't have that label. Right. And people are working on it. They're trying to refine those labels. Yeah. But I think it has gotten to a point where a lot of the biblically responsible investment crowd has tried to distance themselves from the ESG movement. Right. Why, why is that, Jesse? Well, they have not gotten along on the at these conferences, at these uh, databases and organizations. The ESG funds don't want them there. And, and, and the reason is, is because the ESG crowd has become more uh, weaponized, mm. really, by liberal activists that want to push forward their harmful socialist, Marxist, if you will, agenda, and hence the problem. Yeah, and once again, it just separates the polarizing views of what could be a good thing. So, so a lot of biblically responsible investments, and we're going to have a whole show on that, but mm -hmm. a lot of biblically responsible investments started out with the ESG label, because right. they're all principles that, that Christ talks about in his ministry, right? Right. You know, being socially fair and social justice, talking about, you know, pr taking care of uh, being good stewards of these yeah, things. Yeah, I mean, that goes all the way back to Genesis. <laughs> And, and even, you know, thinking about running of companies, you know, how many times did he really talk to the, and get on the Pharisees and the Sadducees and stuff, right? Yeah, often. <laughs> the leaders of the church at the time. <laughs> so these are all concepts, but what's happened is, is that the biblical responsible com investing community has said, enough. And in fact, where we um, practice as with our, with our broker-dealer and things, we have a separate s study group from the two. Mm. because the, there's such such polarizing topics and things. Right. But I think the main point, Jesse, was we wanted to point out that, yes, you can have the feel-good notion that ESG-type funds are, are doing good, but in reality, only a small portion of the portfolio actually meets the mm -hmm. label. And you're paying a significant premium to have that privilege. Yeah, so you should always be, you know, by caveat and mature, you know, bowery beware. You need to make sure that you understand if you're looking at ESB investments, you know, seeing what they'll do and how they perform, is it worth the extra cost? Because in most cases, these funds are not performing much different than traditional mainline mm -hmm. mutual funds. Right. Um, just to break down what has happened in the past, a lot of these funds tend to favor software and healthcare. because so a lot of technology. A stuff. lot of technology yeah. type stuff. And of course, they avoid the major energy companies, the ones that are extracting oil and gas, um, but which actually, you know, have done well from time to time. So whatever sector is in the ESG fund is, is what's going to do well or not so well. Yeah. Now, in the Harvard study, um, they did find that investors were p willing to pay as much as 20 basis points or 0.2% more mm -hmm. per year just to have the ESG label. But what the re research shows that there was actually higher fees on top of that for that label. Okay. Now, there's a lot of resources out there. If you're curious if a stock or something that you own 
is out there, you know, contact us. We'll send you to a couple of different sites where you can score those particular companies. Right. And a lot of people are surprised by that. They're, they're, they're surprised to find out that a company that they love is not doing so well on the ESG score mm-hmm. table. So while we, we, we find there's a lot of, of uh, definitely positive altruistic type features, we find that investors are being taken advantage of right. with these things when only a small portion of the mutual fund actually is and meets the criteria of environmentally uh, cleaner, socially more fairer, and uh, governed better right. uh, in those funds. So uh, a lot of, we won't necessarily get into this in detail today, but a lot of states are pushing back against it as well. I'm sure that, you know, all the headlines talk about Florida and the more conservative states that are pushing back against ESG in their state pension funds, but we're seeing it pop up really across the nation. People are questioning.